there was the human heart and the body came out of the heart. Mm -hmm. What do you think the first thing is? The tongue? <laughs> the tip of the tongue. Really? It's the first thing that emerges out of the, the, of the body that merges out. Interesting. And so you can intuitively see that, this, that the sacred space of the heart is connected somehow to the tip of the tongue. And on the roof of the mouth is something that we don't know, but there's a there's literally a sexual organ in there that looks like a vagina with a clitoris, and it doesn't uh, function until it's massaged in a certain way, and when it does, little bump forms, and the sexual energy flows between the heart and the brain, and it goes to the thalamus, and the thalamus. When you do that, it begins to fire alpha in the four quadrants of the brain. And when, the, and when you do this long enough and the alpha is equal or relatively equal in the four quadrants of the brain and strong enough, then the pineal gland, which is the third eye, it's literally an right. eyeball. Right. It is hollow. It has color receptors in it. It has a lens on it, and it's facing up instead of out at 90 degrees to what we are now. And in the ancient writings, they talk about how you have to bend that. Well, it's with intention. You turn that eye and look out what we call the third eye. But what you're looking at is the pituitary gland, which is right in front of there. And when, you're, when the alpha is fired up high enough, then when you, um, uh, what appears is a green light appears all inside of you. It could be a greenish yellow or it could be a greenish blue, but it's green in nature. And you begin to look at that direction. Your eyes have to slightly go up because it's a higher place than where your normal eyes are. And when you you look at that other one, then what happens is a uh, a spiral usually occurs, and it locks those two together. And then there's another one behind it. And when you connect with that one, then around your head there are these eight beams of light that are formed, and a sphere appears around your head. And at that moment, whatever you're dreaming in your heart becomes reality in the outer world. And I mean flat out real. And it doesn't and, and there are people that are actually studying this. Uh, Dr. James Hart, one of the greatest uh, uh, brain researchers on the planet, um, ha has uh, looked into all of this and has been able to see that that these things are actually occurring. They can they can scientifically test them as they're happening. They, they're testing the creation process. You can create with your brain or you can create with your heart, but there's a big, big difference. And so most people in the world are creating with their brain. You remember that DVD that came out called The Secret? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, and they made $100 million on that. And, uh, and they're telling everybody, you know, you, laws of attraction, uh, you do this, 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 and this, and you can have all the money you want, and everything else is how they talk about it. But when you create with your brain, the brain is a polarized instrument. It is a left and a right side, male and female. And whatever you create, you're going to get the equal and opposite creation coming from behind you where you don't see. So if you, if you, if you, whatever you create, you're going to get exactly what you don't want. And, and it works the other way around, too. If you create something evil, dark, you're going to create something light also. But, and then you look at the, all the people that were involved in that and what's happened. They're all in court suing each other, and all the money is tied up in court, and it will be for years and years and years, <laughs> because that's what's coming back from behind them. But if you create from your heart, it has a single eye, not two. Is that creating what the old saying was, though, what goes around comes around? Well, that's karma. Yeah. That's karma. That, that, that's a little different. Uh, whatever you do, uh, you're going to find the same thing coming back at you. It, it is related in that you're still creating. when you, Whatever you do, every word you say, every thought you have, every feeling, you, you're creating in one way or another. But uh, if you create from the, from the heart, you get only – the heart will never create anything that harms anybody anywhere. I haven't asked you of the date here that you have on the cover of the book, 1949 to 2013. Why that window? Well, because I really believe that we will not get past 2013. And I, it, it's a long uh, understanding of all of this and, 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 and long talks with the Mayans. <clears throat> the Mayans don't think so either. It's almost like it's uh, a date on a tombstone. Well, kind of. Uh, 
uh, there's a certain date in there, February 19th, that I think that is going to be uh, in the future is going to be uh, the 2013 will be a very important date. Well, when you say we won't get past it, don't we it start the again? The old way of existing, the, old the way, way we are now. Okay. Well, we're going to change into something new, and it will. And uh, and on that date, we will really take off. Uh, though the Mayans. Uh, uh, I actually, I wish I could say something, but they believe it's going to happen much sooner. Yeah, when, when can we expect an announcement from the Well, they're, they're creating a movie right now. It's called The Shift of the Ages. Uh, and uh, and this is headed by uh, Don Alejandro Surio, who is the, uh, the, the, like the president or the Dalai Lama right. of, of the entire Mayan nation of all 440 tribes. And uh, they're creating a, a movie around him and where he is going to explain uh, what the Mayans know and what they believe is going to happen. I don't know when that's coming out, but uh, I know they're almost done with it. Well, the window, according to them, is up to 2015, I guess. Yeah, somewhere in there. They never told me the exact date. According to the, to the Hopi, there will be a red star that will appear, <laughs> and that red star will mark the end of this window. Well, yeah. But I don't. What would be the significance of the red star if we already think the blue one was that common? Well, I don't know. It's like right now, there's a there is a in the in the constellation of Orion, there's a, a star about to form a supernova, and uh, and it hmm. happen any minute the way it's occurring. And if it does, it will affect us here. Oh, sure will. And it will sure. form a huge red star in the sky. Well. So maybe that's it. Maybe it isn't. I don't know. Do they ever look at the, like the biblical book of Revelation, Dunvalo? Do they look at that and say there are signs here too? The Mayans? Yeah. Um, I, I, <laughs> they they don't have real good feelings. Most of the tribes don't have good feelings about uh, what happened from the Christians. Not that they're bad people or anything. It, it isn't that. It's just that they, they were persecuted quite heavily. And especially with the conquistadors and what happened sure, and all of that. So uh, they were forced into it. But they have their own ideas, and uh, and it's these ideas that we are interested in. And yes, there there are books uh, all over the world that talk about this in different ways. Not not only the Bible, but uh, the first five books of the Bible are also very very important because that's the Jewish Torah. And uh, and that's where you have. Uh, if you remember, a few years ago, we heard about the Bible Code. Yep. And uh, Michael Drosnitz. Yeah, exactly. And uh, and he was the one that uh, revealed that out to the world. I spent a long time with uh, with the University of of, uh, of uh, Jer Jerusalem and the work that they were doing there. And it's pretty clear now, from what they know now, because they have now looked at the names of over 30,000 people, and and, uh, and in every single case there, the name shows up, the exact date of their birth, the place of their birth, the exact day of their death, the exact place of their death, and in the crossword puzzle running across there is the major accomplishments of their life. What was never revealed is that it is an infinite geometrical progression, and it goes back in every single word that person ever said. When, when we come back, we're going to take phone calls with our special guest, the author of Serpent of Light, Beyond 2012, June Valo, Melchizedek. Okay, welcome back, and let's go to the phones. Here we go to Phoenix, Arizona. George, welcome to Coast to Coast around with John Vulo. Go ahead. Yes, uh, what you said about the uh, 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 mantle uh, melting and so forth and the uh say the continental plates shifting around that'd be like continental drift uh chaotic i mean continental drift on the right but it'd be almost like a dog shaking to get rid of fleas and i believe what you enjoyed said i always have about the earth being a living being or a living thing and i believe that uh what you said about 2013, I came up with that date myself because I figure if the plates start shifting around, like what you said, it's going to cause earthquakes, volcanoes and stuff, and hurricanes on a massive scale. So uh, I just want to know how did you come to that conclusion of 2013, and 
So tell me a little bit more about that blue sphere. I, I keep up <laughs> with uh, astronomy, and I've well, never heard about that. You picked one question I can't tell you the answer to is why I came up with that date, because it's tied to certain indigenous tribes